Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're going to discuss crutches. Let's talk about it right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things, like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So today we're gonna to talk about crutches. Now I know I said before we started, break a leg, but we're not gonna actually need physical crutches, are we? No, that's not the kind of crutches we're talking about. Though I did spend two years on crutches. At some point, somebody must have said to you like, enough with the crutches already, aren't crutches only supposed to be for like two or three months? Yeah, it definitely had a few people that are like, how long are you gonna be on those things? Like, are you just relying on them now? You done walking? Yeah, I know, right? But I did, I spent two years on those crutches when I broke my ankle and I was great when I finally got off of them, but then I did need a cane for a little while as well. But that's not the kind of crutches we're talking about today. Today we're gonna talk about crutches that we have in our lives to get by, especially when it comes to our diet lifestyle. And it doesn't even mean just keto, just our diet in general, what we eat. What are we using to get by that we maybe are leaning on just a little bit too much? And why are we doing that? That's the biggest thing for me because we're talking about products that are not bad. Right. It's just that we they're not really adding to our nutrition mm -hmm. and yet we use them every single day. Right. And I think it's important for us to understand why we use them. Are they doing what they're designed to do? And is there anything that we've been using too long or so, you know just reevaluate. Right. Now, this doesn't even have to just be products. It could be like other things, activities, things that we may be doing on a regular basis. Yeah. But as far as products, I have one right here. There you go. Soda. So when I got started on keto, I looked at it like I gave up everything. And I was drinking a tremendous amount of soda. I mean, we've talked about it before. I was drinking like 150, 200 ounces a day of Diet Coke. And my attitude was, hey, I've given up everything else. I'm not giving up my soda. That's a crutch. It is a crutch. And I like that you're evaluating the attitude behind it because it's not a happy attitude. It's like, no, this is mine. Don't right. touch it. That sounds almost like Tabitha when she gets, you know, a bone and the cats are kind of coming over like, hey, what do you got? And it's like, get away. Right. This is mine. So it's okay to to use it, and obviously you do drink it, right? but drink it because you enjoy it, right. not because like if you come over here and try to take my soda from me, then I'm gonna freak out. Right. So, so what would be one of your crutches? <laughs> coffee. I definitely drink a tremendous amount of coffee. And let's face it, I don't need the caffeine. I'm awake. You, I think you can tell by my personality that yep. I'm a pretty like go-go girl, and I've gone 30 days without coffee uh -huh. before. So I managed to get up every morning and do my day. Um, but I was thinking today, I know why I love coffee so much. Why? Because my first cup of coffee came when I was like five or six years old in my grandparents' kitchen. Now my grandparents were my most favoritest people in the whole world. <laughs> and I spent a lot of time with my grandparents and something that they just did every morning was get up and share their first cup of coffee. And I remember feeling so important and happy when they poured me a little cup. Now, of course, it was mostly cream and sugar and just like a splash of coffee, but I felt like I was part of what they were doing. and. Coffee really in that moment became my first comfort food. Okay. And so even though I was fine to like release macaroni and cheese and, and mashed potatoes and some of the other things that other people see as comfort food, coffee has been something that it's like when I'm sad, coffee. I'm tired, I'm overdone, coffee. Because I associate it with comfort. Right. So it's okay for me to have coffee, but I like the fact that I kind of get why I love it so much. Okay. 
I've got another one over here. I'm gonna bring out actually a couple things so that we don't make it too long, but how about like does, flavorings and sweeteners? Does this go with it a little bit? Absolutely, this one especially for me because like you're talking about coffee, I cannot drink coffee without at least some type of a cream in it. Like I can do without the sweetener. As a matter of fact, I don't even know how this happened. But when I started drinking coffee, like in the latter part of high school and college, I did wait a little bit longer than you did. Right. But I drank coffee. You weren't a toddler? No. <laughs> I drank coffee the way my mom and dad drank it. Okay. Which was light. Mm -hmm. Didn't have sweetener. I never got into the coffee light and sweet because when I was growing up, you used to go to the local deli and order, order your coffee. I'd like a coffee light and sweet, right? That's how you ordered it. How cute. You never told them how much sugar. I want it light and sweet. And they'll handle it. But I just liked milk and we didn't have cream in my house. We grew up with skim milk. Mm -hmm. That's, again, we've talked about you know, I grew up in the time where everything that we say now in the keto lifestyle is bad for you. Back then, it Fat was the healthiest free. way to eat, right? Fat free, margarine. skim milk, margarine, corn oil, mm -hmm. that stuff. But yeah, so I always drank it with only cream or milk in it. Somewhere in my life, I started adding sugar. First, it went from the milk, non-fat dry milk, to heavy cream or to half and half. And then somehow I shifted to sugar. Right. And I don't know where that happened in my life, but it became more of a crutch. So then when I started keto, it's like, whoa, 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 what happened to like having a little bit of coffee with a whole lot of those flavored creamers that you get that you want to drink without the coffee? I was gonna say coffee became a milkshake. Yes. Very quickly. So yeah, having all that was definitely a crutch for me, but then we get into like sweeteners and you know, you start adding sweeteners to everything. And listen, we're not saying sweeteners are bad. We have them in our house right here. This but is our stuff. <laughs> I feel like we do have to look at why are we adding so much sweetener? Because like when I see videos from like Dr. Perry or something like that, and they're saying like, hey, listen, understand that sweeteners may be causing an insulin response on you. My immediate reaction is, you're not taking away my sweeteners. Like you've had everything else, just like the soda, but you can't have it. Yeah, well, and don't you notice that it starts out, I need five drops in a cup of coffee, and mm -hmm. then like it doesn't take very long until I've amped it up a little bit. Right. Because it, first of all, it was just adding this to milk. Then I needed my milk to be sweet, but I didn't get rid of this. Right. But then I added this too. Right. So it's like, I'm, I'm looking for a milkshake flavor or mm -hmm. something going on in my coffee. And it's interesting when you said, I, I'm not like you, I can't drink my coffee light. All right. So that's not really true. You okay. absolutely physically could drink coffee without anything in it's it. It's just disgusting. You just choose not to. Mm -hmm. And I have the same language when it comes to water. I will say, well, you like water, but I'm like not the same as you in my ability in my mind, like I have to have something to flavor my water or it cannot be swallowed. Well, that's not really true. I just choose to flavor my water with like this true lemon, true lime, true orange, these different, you know, flavor water right. enhancers. Some people use like a crystal light type, you know, mm -hmm. flavor enhancer because I want to. It's better, I think, for me to say to myself, I like this and I want to consume this rather than I have to medicate my water because I'm different than every other human being right. and I cannot drink things like unlike they can drink it because then it becomes like an excuse. Right. Instead of like, I want this. Yeah. Well, before we move on to like, what's the point of all this, let's just show some of the other crutches that we may have in our life. Some tea. people aren't coffee people. Some people are tea people. Yep. That's what I drink when I'm trying to not drink so much coffee. <laughs> hot chocolate. Hot chocolate, or not just hot chocolate, but alternatives, like keto alternatives, right? Yeah. So it could be hot brew. chocolate, it could be Creo brew, it could be cookies, cupcakes, like the keto friendly versions. What do you got over there? Bang, which I love. This is the best flavor, <laughs> P.S. The candy apple crisp is ridiculous delicious okay but that aside it's not something i absolutely need right whatever verbiage that they have around here like this is vitamins and minerals and like this will help make your day awesome that's just me using it as like thank you for providing that 
copy on your can because right. it gives me an excuse to drink something that I want to drink. Yep. Same thing with <laughs> Zip Fizz. There are other ways that I could get my electrolytes and vitamins that aren't nearly as delicious. Now this is great, so this is terrible, but I was gonna say I could use salt, well, magnesium to finish potassium. up with the other products. As in addition, you say Zip Fizz, and you're talking about you can find other ways to get, you know, your electrolytes. I wasn't pulling in salt. This just happens to be on the table when you said that. It made me think of it. Um, I'm not pulling in salt for like the other way to get your electrolytes, but. Not to throw you under the bus, yeah. But a major crutch that you had for years, flavorings of any sort, was salt, right? Yeah. I mean, Rachel would put so much salt on her plate that if you lifted up the plate, you could see, see? where the plate was. Now, my father did the same thing. So I think sometimes too, it's like, oh, well, in our family, the way we cook or the way we have our food, we're very heavy handed with the seasoning. Right. So. I really need to kind of rein things back, especially, I mean, all spices, mm -hmm. right? Because spices do have residual carbs. They're not just like toss as much as you want on them. Um, but I need to learn to taste some of the food. Right. Just the way they naturally taste. They taste awesome, right? right? You have brisket. You don't really need to put a, a gajillion pounds of barbecue Especially when there's on already it. a lot of salt on that. Exactly. And just, you know, but I do use it as a crutch to make me feel like I've got more flavors and it's almost like it's consoling me. Right. Now, the whole point of this was, are crutches good? Are they bad? And, you know, especially when it comes to salt, like salt is necessary in your life, especially on keto, good quality salt. You right. want to have like Redmond's Real Salt. That's what we use every day. We go through a tremendous amount. We went, we got a 25 pound bag and I'm probably a quarter of the way through that bag already. We use a lot, but we're using it now for the electrolytes, for a little bit of seasoning, but for the electrolytes and we're not overdoing it. Now, when it comes to it being a crutch, like you say with food, like some chefs get offended if you pull out salt, if you pull out like condiments and start putting on your food, like, I mean, for me, like talk about a, an, a crutch is like ketchup. Yeah. I love ketchup. I mean, and I was so happy to find that you have Alterna Sweets, which is a good, you know, alternative for the keto lifestyle to have ketchup. It makes me think, I remember talking to a friend who, when they've kind of like overhauled school lunches, they were saying you have to have a certain amount of vegetables in a school lunch. And they were using the ketchup packets as like a vegetable option. And I thought, well, that would be a great excuse for somebody like me in the past who it's like, it's not really adding anything nutritionally to me. I just like the condiments because right. I want them. Right. You know, I want them to flavor my food. And again, I don't think that the crutches are bad. I think what is bad is if we are too afraid to investigate why we are using this particular crutch and is it doing what it needs to do. And that's what I was gonna say. So my personal opinion is I don't think it's bad to have a crutch. If we have a crutch that's going to keep us on this lifestyle, I don't see anything wrong with it so long as we don't lean too heavily on that crutch, right? A, cut, a crutch is designed to be an aid. When we're on crutches, it's supposed to help us walk. You still have to have one of your feet on the ground when right. you're using those crutches, right? Or sometimes then you even go from two crutches to one crutch to get around. Yeah. But it's not meant to do all of the work. And if, they, if we have like a crutch, we need to number one, recognize in our life, why do we have that crutch? Can we get away without having it? But knowing like this is what it's doing for us. It's okay to lean on something. If we need, for example, a sweetener right. to keep us from going back to the standard American diet, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I do think that there's a problem we realize like if I don't have that sweetener, like I can't function because now right. it's relying on it a little bit too much. And it kind of leads me up to I think one of the biggest crutches that most of us have when it comes to the keto lifestyle especially, and that is the whole debate that we talk about all the time of the net carb, total carb protocol. Right. Because if we understand where the net carb thing even came from, it came from the Atkins diet. They started releasing products saying, hey, you can have this because your body's not gonna digest the fiber, which isn't 100% true. 
and oh, it's got these sugar alcohols, which your body's not gonna do anything with, which isn't 100% true. It depends on the sugar alcohol that you're dealing with. And it was a way for them to sell products. Now the problem is there's more products out there. And, and different types of fibers. And different fibers and fibers that are actually sweeteners that impact us. And the companies are using it as a marketing gimmick to get us to buy more stuff. And we're going, it's zero net carb. It's one net carb. So we're getting more and more and more. And that's why we always advocate, if you're gonna follow, follow net carbs, at least at minimum, put a total carb cap on because now you're putting a limitation to how much you're relying on that crutch. Well, and I would say it's very important to stay open about having a chat with yourself every once in a while and reevaluating, do I still need to have every glass of water be a flavored seltzer water? Mm -hmm. Could I have a regular glass of water or I'm not drinking any water at all? You right. know, and it's the same thing with the total net carb thing. If you're doing net carbs, again, we're not keto police. It's, you know, you do what's best for you, but we really wanna encourage you to have a discussion with yourself every once in a while and say, am I still on this for, for the reason I wanna be on it? Is right. it still working for me? Or am I like being very protective of certain things and really doing a disservice to myself because I'm not willing to even discuss the matter? Right, and like I said, Again, there's nothing wrong with crutches. I People ask me like, what are your thoughts on keto products? I think keto products are great within reason. And the reason being is it's a good alternative. There are a lot of people, myself included, if you looked at me and said, you are never ever in your life having a piece of keto, a chocolate. You are never having any kind of sweet. You're never ever now having ice cream. that's all I want. Yeah, it's gonna make you binge on it more. So if there is a keto product out there that you enjoy and having that is keeping you from going back to the standard American diet, I think that's okay. I think it's a crutch to keep you on the diet. It's when that crutch becomes your sole purpose, the, the only thing that you can do. If you cannot ever live without it, right. then there's a different issue. Well, and I think that after you've been on keto for two, three, four years, right? Mm -hmm. We've crossed the bridge of, I'm trying to use this as a crutch to help me stay on keto. Right. By this time, you're on keto because you've experienced major weight loss, major health improvement, right. major mental clarity. Like there's a lot more reasons for you to stay on keto right. than there are reasons for you to stop keto. Right. So now you can reevaluate your relationship with some of these crutches and mm -hmm. bridges and say, do I still need it? Do I still want it? It's okay if the answer right. is yes. Mm -hmm. I need crutches. Yeah, it's it's okay to have them, but I think that we have to constantly be evaluating our relationship with the stuff that we put inside of our yeah. body. Figure out why you need the crutch. And it's not get rid of the crutch, it's figure out why you need it because that's gonna help you long term. It's just like they talk about people who do go get weight loss surgeries or people who just have lost weight and they always gain it back. Why do they gain it back? Because a lot of times they never dealt with what got them heavy in the first place. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing here. What we're saying is evaluate what are your crutches in your life and then figure out why do you have them? Why do you need them? I need a crutch because having that little crutch is going to keep me from ever going back to a standard American diet. It's gonna keep me from having a cheat day. Yeah. Let us know down in the comment section what some of your crutches may be. Also, let us know some different topics that you'd like to see us discuss here on Let's Talk. I love it. Please do us a favor, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.